All right, so today I want to talk about iterated monodromy groups and transcendental dynamics, uh, which was the title also of my thesis. So um, what I will be focusing on today is basically how do points in a um, backward orbit of a point move. So if we have f, an entire function, and we have some base point t, we can look at its forward uh, orbit, but we can also look at its backwards orbit. And um, the basic slogan behind iterated monodromy groups is how do points in a backwards orbit move if we move around our base point um, around the set. And so the possible ways to permute the backwards orbit uh, can be described uh, by the iterated monodromy group. And iterated monodromy groups are examples of self-similar groups. And self-similar groups have often very exotic geometric group uh, properties. Um, for example, uh, one of the first examples of groups of intermediate growth, the very um, celebrated Guiacho group, uh, is a self-similar group. And similarly, um, the Basilica group, which you already have seen in the talks by uh, Laurent and um, Bolodia, is an example of a non-elementary amenable group. And um, in my thesis, I uh, initiated the study of iterated monodromy groups for entire functions. And one of the main results of the thesis is the following uh, theorem, that if you have a uh, post-singly finite uh, entire transcendental function, then the iterated monodromy group of f is amenable if and only if uh, its monodromy group is. So in my talk, I will... Um, Oops. Okay, in my talk, I will first uh, do a brief recap on monodromy. Then I will go over to iterative monodromy groups and, in particular, show how to um, combinatorially conceptualize iterative monodromy groups of uh, entire functions as groups determined by some automata. Uh, and then we will um, see how we can prove the result that I stated in the beginning. So in order to uh, go about monodromy, I want to do a brief recap uh, on singular values. I think most of you have seen this in Anna's talk. So what's important for me um, is this function, 1 minus z times the exponential function. So this function has two singular values, uh, 0 and 1. Zero is an asymptotic value, which you can see by going off to negative infinity. So then, um, if you apply the function, you will get close to zero. And it's easy to check that its only critical value is one, uh, which is the image of zero, which is the only critical point. So I will work with this function to, um, during my talk most of the time. So I wanted to mention this here. And um, why are we interested in singular values? Uh, so I think this lemma was also seen multiple times already in the conference. Uh, if we have an entire function, then it restricts to an unbranched covering away from the singular set. And an unbranched covering, so classical covering from uh, topology, has a unique path lifting properties. So if we have some path here going around uh, zero, then we can lift it, and loops might not need to close up. So if you go once around zero, we only do a half turn if you take three images. And this is where the interesting properties of uh, monodromy come into play. So what we are doing uh, for entire transcendental function is the following. We uh, consider functions in the Spicer class. So we are only interested in functions that have finitely many uh, singular values. And um, we want to define or give a combinatorial description of the monodromy action. So of the action of the fundamental group of C without the um, singular set on the set of pre-images of our base point. And the way uh, I like to describe this is 
using a preferred generating set coming from a rose graph, and this is dual to a spider. For me, a spider is something that connects uh, every single uh, value to infinity by disjoint arcs. And here on the right, you can see such a spider for the example functions we are constructing. And so what's the uh, dual generating set? So we just take loops that cross one of the spider legs uh, once in a positive fashion. So for the spider we have seen here, we have two generators, G and H. And then uh, we uh, take the pre-images under our entire function, and uh, we uh, obtain the Schreier graph of the monodromy action of our function. So if we take this uh, preferred generating set, then uh, we have some nice properties uh, relating the orbits of the generators to uh, pre-images of the singular set. So here we can look at the colored in regions and look at their pre-images. And from this, we see that under this generating set, uh, trivial pre-images correspond to regular pre-images. So there is a little um, violet curves correspond to regular pre-images of the value one. Uh, finite non-trivial orbits correspond to critical points. So the fact that zero is a critical point and maps two to one to one is reflected by the fact that we have an orbit of size two around uh, zero. And infinite orbits correspond to logarithmic singularities. So the fact that zero is an asymptotic value is reflected by the fact that we have here an infinite orbit for this generator. If we um, consider the action, then uh, this defines also a group homomorphism from the fundamental group of C without a singular set to the set uh, to the permutation group of the primages. And so the monodromy group is the image of this morphism. And um, for uh, structurally finite maps, so these are maps with only finitely many singularities. Uh, the monodromy group is nice enough to handle. For the exponential function, uh, you all know it's uh, just z. And for the example uh, which I've given here, it's also not uh, too complicated. Uh, and one way to make this precise is the following statement that monodromy groups of structurally finite maps are uh, elementary amenable. And the idea is that they all have a similar um, description as an extension with groups that are roughly similar to what's happening for 1 minus z times the exponent. Um, so this is what I wanted to say about monodromy. So now I would go over to iterated monodromy if there aren't any questions. Okay. Um, so for iterated monodromy, we are going now to the um, field of dynamics. So um, so it means that you can uh, get your group out of uh, finite groups and abelian groups via um, classical group operations such as taking extensions and taking direct limits. So um, here, uh, this is an abelian group. Uh, this is a locally finite group. So it's also elementary amenable because it's a direct limit of finite groups. And since this is an extension of these two groups, it's also elementary amenable. And it's called elementary amenable because there's a notion called amenable, which I might get to later. And these are, for trivial reasons, amenable. Yes. So this is the uh, set of finitely supported permutations on the integers. So you have a permutation which only changes finitely many um, but maybe that Z is. So this is not a finite group. This is. No, but I got it. 
Okay, yeah, the, the, the translation up is the Z part. That's not finite. And you have uh, finite permutations, which come from the fact that you can basically move points over here and have finite permutations. So you can move up and down, and you can do finite changes. And this is why you have this extension. So the um, monodromy group of this function is the group here in the middle. So it's an extension of that by a locally finite group. Um, OK, so for iterated monodromy groups, I first uh, want to emphasize that I'm only working with postingly finite maps. So um, the posting I said you are all familiar with. Uh, what's important for me are the fact that the singular set of every iterate is contained in the post singular set. So in particular, we have that uh, if you look at any iterate, it also restricts to an unbranched covering over C without the post singular set. And then we can let the fundamental group of C without the post singular set act on every level of pre-images via uh, monodromy. And a way to um, organize this action is uh, via the dynamical pre-image tree, which was already drawn both by Volodia and Laurent. So here I draw it again. But um, so it has as vertices, uh, has as root or base point, and it has vertices pre-images of our base point. Um, what's important to emphasize is if you are working with transcendental uh, entire function, then every point in this dynamical pre-image tree has infinitely children because every point away from the post singular set has infinitely many pre-images. So it will be an infinitely many uh, regular tree. Um, now, as I mentioned before, we have now that the fundamental group of C without the post singular set acts on every level via a monodromy. And we organize this action together into the iterated monodromy action. Um, so in fact, this action is an action which preserves the edge structure, which is easy to think about when you are um, seeing that edges are given by taking pre-images and we are taking um, iterated lifts. So they uh, preserve the property of uh, being pre-images, so the edges are preserved. So we have a group homomorphism from the fundamental group of C without the post singular set to the group of uh, automorphism of this regular uh, tree. And then the iterated monodromy group can be described as either the image of this uh, group homomorphism or uh, by the first fundamental if isomorphism theorem, uh, you can quotient out the kernel uh, of this group homomorphism, and different people have different preferences. So I mentioned both of the versions. So now that we have defined iterated monodromy groups for entire functions, uh, I want to compare them for, to iterated monodromy groups for uh, polynomials. So there's the result by uh, Volodya uh, Laurent and Vadim um, Kamanovic that if you take a post singularly finite polynomial, then the iterated monodromy group of this polynomial is amenable. And the way they showed it is by um, showing that, first of all, um, groups generated by bounded activity automata on finite alphabets are. Uh, amenable and um, by the work of Valeria and uh, Laurel, you know that um, iterated monodromy groups of polynomials are of this form. So, in particular, this work applies. And uh, we are doing something similar. We realize uh, iterated monodromy groups of entire functions as. Um, via bounded activity automata on infinite alphabets. So what do I mean by this? 
um ah, okay so uh now i go to the language of self similar groups so similar to what Ro has done this morning uh i am interested in automata and for me an automaton is a map that um takes some state set q and some alphabet and uh, puts spits out a letter of the alphabet and a new state. Um, so y you might have seen in the morning this diagram, the diagram of the adding machine. For me, it's um, more convenient to take the dual diagram where we have as um, nodes the letters of the alphabet and as edges, we have some so the colors of the edges corresponds to the state and uh, the label of the edges will be the resulting new state. Um, and so again, we can extend um, the automaton to act on finite words in the alphabet. And in, in my setting, I will only consider state sets which are finite, but alphabets which are considered uh, infinite. And um, the uh, kind of automata I'm interested in are group automata. So these are automata where uh, the induced action on the uh, alphabet is a permutation for every state. And we also um, uh, Keep an identity state which uh, doesn't do anything. And if we do this, then we actually have a bijection not only on the first level, but on every level of, the, uh, of a standard uh, regular tree. Here's an example for the alphabet 0 and 1. And then these are give examples of self-similar groups. And uh, what does bounded activity mean? Bounded activity means that if we take any length n, there are only finitely many pairs of states and words of finite length such that the restriction of the state on the word of that length is not equal to the identity. So only for every length n, only for finitely many pairs, something restricts non-trivially. And with this in mind, uh, I can give the definition uh, which is uh, central to the talk, namely uh, of dendroid automata. So we call an automaton a dendroid automaton if three conditions are satisfied. So the first one, uh, I won't go into uh, much detail, but it says something about the topology of the uh, space of permutations. If you fill in the loops here, it should be contractible. That's the short. A version how to state it. More importantly, what I want is that for every non-trivial state, I want that it's uh, the restriction at a unique pair of a, a state and a letter. So if we uh, see this in the language of dual Moore diagrams, I want that every state uh, appears exactly once as the label of an edge. And secondly, what I want is uh, for all infinite orbits, I want only trivial restrictions. And for every finite orbit, I want that there's only one edge which has a non-trivial uh, restriction. So what I'm not allowed would be if I have G uh, in the upper part of the two cycle, that there would be an H on the lower part of the two cycle. This would be um, violating this restriction. And uh, with this definition, the main structure result uh, is the following. Uh, if we have a post singularly finite entire function, then the iterative monodromy group can be given uh, by a, such a dendroid automaton. And in particular, if you uh, look at the combinatorial um, conditions, in particular the second condition, it's easy to convince yourself that it must be an automaton of bounded activity growth. And for polynomials, uh, uh, for exponential functions, there's a very explicit description of the resulting uh, automaton based on the leading sequence of the 
uh, function in the exponential family. And uh, the way how you arrive at these results is uh, you use a, a nice labeling on the dynamical preimage tree. And for exponentials, we can use um, an explicit dynamical partition given by dynamic rays based on the work of uh, Dirk and uh, Zimmer. Uh, and for general entire functions, we have to use periodic spiders here, periodic spiders only up to homotopy, um, which is good enough for the purposes of iterated monodromy groups. And so here in this example, um, one pre-image of this spider leg, uh, gamma one, is gamma zero prime, and one pre-image component of gamma zero is gamma one prime, and from this uh, we got uh, the labeling of these uh, edges. And uh, one can say a lot more uh, for uh, iterated monodromy goes in particular, uh, you can try to use iterative monodromy groups uh, as a topological model of entire functions, and this might be an algebraic approach to transcendental Thurston theory. Uh, you can also uh, use uh, these automata to relate post-singular finite and uh, transcendental functions to uh, post-singular finite polynomials, and can say something interesting in this direction. But Obviously, the uh, next step would be to look at iterative monodromy groups of meromorphic functions. And so what we have done here so far was going from complex dynamics to group theory by studying the iterative monodromy group. But we can also try to use the iterative monodromy group to say something about the dynamics. Uh, in particular, uh, I hope to be able to say something about landing uh, relations of dynamic rays or dreadlocks uh, with the help of iterative monodromy groups, and of course, amenability is only one group theoretical property. It's also interesting to investigate other group uh, properties of iterative monodromy groups. And so with this in mind, I hope I convinced you that the study of, we studied the study of iterative monodromy groups of entire functions, and so we uh, answered the question of inability amenability for these functions, but again, there are still many interesting directions to continue, and with this, I thank you for your end. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, live or online? Is it, as I imagine, very rare for these monodromy groups to be amenable? So that the, they really correspond to just a couple of examples. So if you are looking at the class of functions which are compositions of structurally finite maps, then they are amenable, and so the monodromy groups are amenable, and by this result, also the iterative monodromy groups are amenable. In general, uh, if you, um, and so structurally finite maps are also the maps where people uh, did some work on their uh, parameter space as well. If you look at general entire functions, you can easily achieve uh, as monodromy groups, uh, virtually free groups, which are basically the opposite of amenable. Uh, and so um, it depends on what you want to look at, I would say. So, so the th fundamental groups that you're talking about are free groups, almost always. Yes. Uh, they're the complements of finitely many points. Yes. Uh, y you're saying that the kernel of the action is enormous, so that it will reduce the size of that group drastically, usually. Um, so for structurally finite maps, yes. It, but in general, the kernel can be quite small. So you can construct examples of entire functions uh, that only have three 
uh, critical values, and every preimage has either is either regular or is a two to one. But you can basically put them in a line in a combinatorially interesting way, such that if you look at the resulting monodromy action, you get just the free product of three copies of Z2, and then you have a virtually uh, free group. So for general functions, if we allow uh, complicated combinatorics far out, then of course the monodromy groups will be also complicated. But for structurally finite maps, they are uh, nice enough that you can even say that the monodromy group itself is elementary amenable, whereas um, by the result, also the iterative monodromy group is amenable, but it won't be uh, elementary amenable in most cases. Uh, if you have a rational function, but not a polynomial, is it known that the iterated monodromy group is amenable? Um, I think this is a question that uh, I'm... So, I think the current state of the art is, if you know that it's of, uh, not necessarily of uh, bounded activity growth, but of polynomial activity growth, then I think Bolloria can show that it's amenable. But uh, if you have something which, for example, so the, the initial monodromy group is uh, finite. The, the initial monodromy group is always finite for rational maps. Yes. But so, and the, no, and the question is uh, if you can expect that iterated monodromy group is amenable in this. So for rational functions, yeah, yeah I, 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 it's difficult. It's difficult in particular in, this, uh, in a case where you have a, a Sapinski gasket, I think. Carpet. But if you have a Sapinski carpet, then people don't know at the moment. But so uh, these uh, examples, so if you look at the exponential functions, then you have Julia sets, which are uh, also the whole plane. But you know that's immunal. So it's something uh, which is not yet known in the Russian. More questions? Online? So let's thank the speaker again.